In 2015, Brazil began experiencing a major public health crisis. A large number of babies are being born with microcephaly, a birth defect that results in abnormally small head and underdeveloped brain. At the same time, researchers discovered that Zika virus was spreading around the population. Zika virus is spread by mosquitoes and can cause fever-like symptoms. Researchers began to wonder, could Zika virus also be responsible for the uptick in microcephaly? You may have heard the phrase, correlation does not equal causation. This is a problem that plagued epidemiologists when they were trying to figure out what the symptoms of Zika actually were. Zika and microcephaly were occurring at the same time in the same place, meaning that they were correlated. But it is possible that microcephaly was being caused by something completely unrelated to Zika. In fact, during the outbreak in Brazil, some people believed that chemicals, not a virus, were causing the uptick in microcephaly. In order to properly understand whether Zika was causing microcephaly, epidemiologists engaged a variety of methods. They had to rule out other causes, conduct case controls comparing microcephaly within Zika-affected areas to non-affected areas, and monitor Zika-infected women during pregnancy to determine if and when microcephaly occurred during development. Epidemiologists also tested the disease on animal models and analyzed the molecular mechanisms of the virus. In 2016, the World Health Organization confirmed that there was scientific consensus that Zika causes microcephaly. In addition to understanding the symptoms of a disease, epidemiology involves tracing the origin and route of a disease to determine its evolution. How is it that microcephaly came to be a symptom of Zika when it wasn't before? The Zika virus originated in the Zika forest of Uganda, where it started out as a relatively mild disease. Its symptoms were fever, rash, headache, and achiness. Researchers discovered that it was spread via the Aedes mosquito and that it could infect both humans and monkeys. Further research in Zika transmission in humans showed that it could be sexually transmitted as well. From 1951 to 2006, Zika was identified 14 separate times throughout Africa and South Asia. Until 2007, however, there were no large-scale outbreaks. At this point, there was an outbreak on the island of Yap. The CDC conducted studies and collected samples, and eventually determined that almost 75% of the population had Zika. A second epidemic occurred in 2013 in French Polynesia. At this point, epidemiologists noticed a new symptom associated with Zika, guillain barr syndrome, an autoimmune disease that can cause temporary paralysis. By 2014, Zika had arrived in Brazil, probably by plane. But microcephaly had never been a symptom of Zika before, and people outside of South America who contracted Zika were not experiencing the same abnormally high rates of microcephaly. Epidemiologists developed a hypothesis that there are two main strains of Zika virus, an African lineage and an Asian lineage. At some point, the Asian lineage split off from the African lineage and acquired the ability to cause microcephaly through a mutation to the virus's genome. Therefore, only populations infected with the Asian lineage of Zika would experience microcephaly as a symptom of Zika, while those infected with the African lineage would not. Microcephaly is a public health crisis. Once epidemiologists confirmed that microcephaly is a symptom of Zika, the epidemic was declared an international emergency in 2015, leading to the influx of funds to help fight the disease. Because Zika only causes microcephaly in unborn infants, it became most important to protect pregnant mothers from being infected with the virus. In 2015, Brazil urged the population to avoid pregnancy, and many countries such as the United States advised their citizens not to travel to Zika-infected countries while pregnant. Because Zika is spread by mosquitoes, mosquito eradication efforts were also effective mechanisms of reducing the number of infected individuals. Additionally, various vaccines have been in development since the crisis first broke out. Hopefully, learning from the Zika crisis, we will be more prepared for not only the next Zika epidemic, but also any emerging disease.